Welcome, guys, to another exciting and riveting episode of your favorite podcast. Come on now, the podcast. It's your lovely moderator slash host, Don, not to be confused with Don King. My hair is a lot more lavish, as you can see. I'm here with my co-hosts and sparring partners, the guys who make this show possible. Uh, Nick, I'll allow him to introduce himself first. Here we go. This is Nick once again, baby. You know, former Division One basketball player used to average 30 points a game, minus 29. Um, <laughs> professional football player, CFL of eight years, uh, NFL one year, arena football one year. So I've been around. Um, I know my stuff, man. I like to talk about it. Um, let's have another great episode. I am Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. I actually was Nick's AAU basketball coach when he averaged one point a game. And um fourteen for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Don, you changed up the hair. It's no it's it's now a little design going on there. When they came in. But you're trying to get to that Don King. I wonder if you poof it out how high it goes. Shout out to Renee. Uh with that being said, guys, we're ready. Ready to blast off. First topic of the day, the Ravens and what they didn't accomplish last Sunday. What are your thoughts, fellas? The floor is yours. Um, I guess I'll dive in first before Rudy does. Um, The Ravens completely bombed on Sunday. They came in. They were a confident bunch. But I think they just hyped us to hype to make us feel like they were better than they really were or how they really felt. They knew that to play Patrick Mahomes, they needed to bring their A game. And they told their minds, or they tried to tell us that they were ready for the game. And obviously, what we saw on Sunday night, they were not ready. It seemed ill-prepared. I can't even say that because everything they did or did the whole year, they decided not to do in the biggest game of the season. They ran the ball 16 times total. And eight of those were Lamar. Let me repeat that. 16 times total, eight of those with Lamar. They gave their running back three carries for 20 yards. That is the most ludicrous thing I've ever seen in my life for a team that runs the ball 32 times a game for the regular season. You come into the playoffs, and what you do below 50-degree weather when you post a pound a team, you decide to air it out because let's prove a point. The point they tried to prove was that Lamar can stand in the pocket and throw the ball all day against the Chiefs. Why? You held a man back all year. You didn't run him as much as you normally does. You don't call as much run plays for him. And then you come, that's what you did that for, to save him for the playoffs, to unleash him, unleash him for three games. You have the divisional game, the conference game, and the Super Bowl. You un I mean, there's nothing else to play for after that. That's what you saved him for all year. And then you come into the playoffs, and you don't really run him. You don't use all of the, what he's good at in that the most important game against one of the better defenses in the league. Actually, the Chiefs' defense was actually statistically yards per game better than the Ravens' defense. So they were playing a great defense. So when you're playing a great defense, the regular X's and O's is always not going to work. What can you do when the X's and O's are not on the table? And they had the best player to do that, which is Lamar, who can – escape a pocket and, and break down a whole defense. But actually, when I, I actually really thought about it, maybe he, he can't anymore. Because even on the ball where he threw and got deflected and he caught it, man, two years ago, three years ago, Lamar would have been hitting his head against the goalpost. He would have caught that the ball that, he, that got deflected that he caught his own ball, he would have scored on. The other play where he ran the ball and he was looking at the DB, any other time... Lamar scores. Maybe he lost the step. Maybe he's not the same guy that we thought he was. And maybe that changed everything that we thought we were going to see. But they had a chance. They were in the game. Everybody came and said, oh, the Chiefs made them change the game plan. They were down seven points. <laughs> what are you changing what you did the whole year? Run the ball, man. What the heck is going on, man? I was so confused and dumbfounded by that. Their OC munkin or munchkin whatever they call him i guess you call him munchkin because he's drunk he put lamar in bad predicaments and he didn't put him in a predicament to 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 be great and that's something the most crucial time of the year that they didn't do that 
Lamar Jackson choked. Period. He choked. He. The reality is we have a situation where he is being given an MVP award, again, because he's going to win it, because there's a media narrative that pushes Lamar Jackson for some reason, which I don't know why. Um, he doesn't – he's mid He's mid-level as a quarterback in throwing the ball. And being a quarterback means you need to throw the ball. If you can't throw the ball from the pocket, you're not a quarterback. He's a guy that can run, and he can't run as fast as he could run two years ago or three years ago or when he won the MVP in his second year. He can't run as fast. It's clear as day. He's not clear. running. It's clear. And actually, they had six running plays to running backs. Six to running backs who average over four yards a carry. The game plan by Todd Munkin was atrocious. At the same time, you have to be able to be, you have to complete passes. There were passes that were there that he missed, that he did not miss versus the Dolphins, that he did not miss versus the 49ers, that he did not miss last week. Last week, I said, the second half of that game, he played as good as I've ever seen. He was crisp. He was sharp. His QBR on Sunday was 42.9. Again, game plan <clears throat> definitely matters, but you have to be able to complete passes when they're there. The pass to Zay Flowers that Flowers committed the personal foul on was grossly underthrown. Underthrown by, I mean, Flowers was waiting for it. He stood there waiting. He was that wide open. If that ball is thrown on target, it's a touchdown. Now, that bites you in the ass when Flowers then fumbles going into the end zone. I mean, look, that was an effort play. Not the brightest play, but an effort play. So they lost seven points there. The, the throw into triple coverage in the end zone was absolutely the dumbest thing I've seen. I, I, I mean, God, I thought that was, that was two a throw on the ball. Because that guy, I mean, he's triple covered. Deion Bush had just come in for the safety that got injured. I think it was his second play in the game, second play on the field, interception. Kid from Miami, University of Miami. Made a great play, but you cannot throw that ball. He cost them a field goal there. You have the best kicker in football. They left 10 points easily on the, on the field. They got lucky as hell because he fumbled in the first half, you know, because he was patting, patting, patting the ball, patting Take the off. ball. Take huh? off. Take off. Yeah. Go. Like, if, if you pat once, go. But he's not going because he, he can't go. That's, if, that, if that game is four years ago, he has 20 runs. He had eight. And, I mean, watching him pat the ball, he completed 54% of his passes. He's being called the MVP because of their record, because they have a top-shelf defense. Look, the first quarter and a half, the Ravens' defense was trash. It was straight-up garbage. But they gave up three points the last 40 minutes of that game. And the Ravens, who scored 28 points a game, scored 10 points. Chief defense is good. But, the, but Lamar let him off the hook. He choked his ass off. I mean, bluntly. That's, he did not play anywhere near the level at which he played all season long. Even uh, the Niners, the Dolphins. I mean, they were putting up monster numbers in those games. The first drive, he looked tight. He looked nervous. He was missing, like I said, he was missing guys all game who were open. Well, and that throw, they, he was missing dudes. He was missing guys. And... Well, I, 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 go, go ahead. I'm sorry, Rudy, but that's my problem. If the quarterback you see is tight from the beginning, why won't you give him a bounce pass for a layup? Why are you still throwing him the ball out there outside the three point line, hoping him, hoping for him to shoot threes? Get the man to the free throw line. Give him a a, a, a technical foul shot, uh, so something that he can see the ball go in the rim. But we're not doing that. All we're doing is keep dropping back. Dropping back, dropping back. Where's the play actions? Where's the, letting Lamar oh. go running, get tackled a little bit so he could feel in tune with the game? Where are where's those decisions in that moment? Why are we calling plays like we're still in college? No, help your superstar quarterback out because you know if he gets his juices flowing, he's one of the most dominant players in the league. But if you let him just sit there and not get into the game, that's what's going to happen. We've seen that he was tight. We've seen that they weren't playing as well as they usually do. But And it's below 50-degree weather, and you run the ball 32 times a game, but today you decide, no, we're going to throw it, 
all day. What do we bring in Dalvin Cook for? What are we doing here? The Chiefs are a good – the Chiefs well, – that was a homeboy bring in. Okay. Dalvin Cook mm-hmm. wasn't going to play in that game. A homeboy bring in. Okay. But what are we doing – like – his receivers, we said it from the get-go. We didn't think that they were that great besides the Zay Flowers. And obviously, Mark Andrews just got back in from injury. Odell Beckham is a shell of his of himself. He, he He's not that guy anymore. Bateman, first-round pick, he's almost considered a bust right now. Do the things that you've been doing. Like, you get here and you decide to be somebody that you're not. I don't get that. How does your running back have three carries? Where's the run? Has options or just run options <laughs> like where it's between Lamar and, and Gus he's he's looking at the DN he's reading he hand it off or he don't hand it off and he runs himself where are those plays what happened to it why did we forget how to play or coach football or play football in the most critical moment yeah maybe they did choke they choked and they all choked that Lamar choked the OC choked Harbaugh choked the, the, the whole I mean even in the first quarter and a half, you could say the defensive coordinator choked because the Chiefs went down the field twice with ease. I mean, they were right down the field with ease both times. And I'm going to be honest with you, if they don't get they, – they gave up a field goal attempt that would have made it 17-7. And they went for a fourth and one from the from the Ravens' 13-yard line, got stuffed. Um, I would have kicked the field goal. This thing of not kicking field goals in the playoffs <laughs> is is it can be costly, and we think we learned that in another game. but. Uh, yeah, I, I just thought he he played terribly, and I, and I, at the end of the day, I he's gonna win the MVP. I don't think he really should have won the MVP. Should have won it then, huh? Who should have won it then? Josh Allen. Josh Allen should have won. Wow, it. no way. Josh Allen. Josh Allen threw counted for over fifty touchdowns. Fifty touchdowns. Josh huh? Allen threw for upwards of forty five hundred, like forty five hundred yards. Josh Allen had a monster season, and when I look at a quarterback who's look, he won the MVP a few years ago, throwing for like he was twentieth in passing. Josh Allen, because, I'm talking about the, what? Josh Allen also put himself in a lot of those predicaments right. where he didn't that much Yeah, more. you know what? That's fine. And if, if you want to be real about how good Baltimore is, they're really good because they run the ball. And they Lamar, run the ball. And, and, and a big part of that is because of what, they, what Lamar but, can do running but, the ball. But, but they also have a line that bashes people. And, yeah, the game plan was shocking. But that goes back. Look, the second drive that the, the Ravens had, they went right down the field. Yeah, and it was like, okay, maybe we got something here, and then all of a sudden, it's like he can't. Then he couldn't make throws after that. It, it was weird. It was weird, and I agree that the the OC he shit the bed too. He shit the bed too, and he deserves all the criticism in the world for that. You know what? But, at the end, but you're the quarterback, and your job as a quarterback is to throw the damn ball. And if you see that you don't have anyone open, you take off because you can run. Even if you can't run as fast as you could run before, he, threw, he was 20 for 37. He threw 37 passes, man. I'm sure he's still faster than Tua. Yeah. So, <laughs> so go, man. I, go. I, oh, I'm sorry. You know who the – I'm sorry. The MVP should have been Tyreek Hill. But, um, um, but we knew that wasn't going to happen after the last – when the last two games happened. But Josh Allen realistically, I mean, had a killer season, man. I had no problem with Lamar. I have no problem with Lamar being a uh, MVP. <clears throat> but as we wrap this up, I just want to say – I don't know why OCs do this. I literally had a team. I played on a team this past year where we played a team before that was like to go to the playoffs and we needed to win. And our backup running back got the ball eight times for like 110 yards. We played the same team in the playoffs. Ask me how much carries that running back got in that game. Zero carries. It's the, I don't know why OCs trick themselves out of a game plan that wins, that's successful. Like, oh, they're going to come back and stop it. Well, make them stop it first, and then you you come up with something else. I I, I, I literally was in a game like, yo, what are we doing? We're, we took the lead, first of all, and then we got to stop. And then this guy never touched the ball, the most dynamic player that was probably on our roster who can who scared the shit out of the other team. And I, I was baffled. I was on the sideline like, what the fuck? I almost called them dumb. But they're like that's I wouldn't want to go that far, but it's it's, 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 it's dumb. It's what, dumb. What are we doing it, here? It's it's like general managers that draft a quarterback who sucked in college and they think they're gonna make him a star in the NFL. Daniel Jones, Mitchell stop Trubisky. Over, stop overthinking. Mitchell, like, you stop. don't you don't you don't pick Daniel Jones and Mitchell Trubisky in the top five. Like what do we top six? What are we doing? 
They both stunk in college. And who was picked behind Mitchell Trubisky? Patrick uh, Mahomes. Mahomes. Who was yeah. a baller in college? Patrick uh, Mahomes. Trubisky uh, I mean, was trash. But they think they know said, better. With that being said, I think it's the perfect segue. We're talking about mismanaging. We're talking about OCs doing weird things, coaches going away from their own game plans. Let's talk about the Detroit confusing Lions. I, I don't understand Bowl. what happened. That was my Super Bowl pick, so I'm very uh, disgusted. Shout out to Big Sean. Shout out to Eminem. And um, I don't know what happened. So you, you got to tell me how you feel about that. I love Dan Campbell. I love Dan Campbell. I love Dan Campbell. Dan, Dan Campbell, you fucked your team. I love you, Dan Campbell, but you fucked your team. I know that's how you play. That's how you played all year. Guess what? This wasn't all year. This was the opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. And at 24-10, you pass up a 45-yard field goal to go for it. Yes, you can say the man needs to catch the ball. Hit him right in both hands. He dropped it. Catches the ball. It's a first down. Absolutely right. You know what? It's like the, it's, it's like the parent who prevents their kid from doing something that they, they know is probably not a good idea, and they stop them from doing it. Well, the parent here said, because every – Nick, you're a football player. If you're on offense, but even I know you play defense, but if you're on offense, you always want to go for it. Of course. Name an offense that doesn't want to go for it. They love it. It juices them up. It's, it's great. That, that's what makes Dan Campbell who he is, and I love him for it. And I love that he owned it at the end. He says, I don't regret it. Perfect, because a lot of pussy coaches out there would say, oh, man, that was a mistake. No, that was your decision. Own your decision. You you made that call, and you would make it again, and I respect that. It was the wrong call, and I'm not playing the result because you go up 27-10, it's a three-score game. You're kicking off. They're getting about the ball to 25. What happens instead, five plays later, it's 24-17. A miracle catch bounces off the face mask of the Detroit Lions defensive back, and somehow Brandon Ayuk catches that ball. I mean, that was ridiculous. That was an amazing play, but, dude, you you set them up for that by, by not kicking a field goal. You know what? If you miss, you miss. But the momentum off of a, of, off of a fourth down stop, I don't believe is the same as the momentum off of a missed field goal. There was a certain energy that popped back in that building. And then you get the ball back, and dude fumbles the ball on the first carry. And now it's 24-24, and you're sitting here like, what the fuck? I mean, come on. And then it's 27-24, and you don't kick a 48-yard field. Like, what? what is going on here? The one field goal he kicked was the one that I never expected him to kick in the first half. That made it 24-7. Or 17 40, whatever it was. Like, I thought he would definitely go for it there because it was the first half. But man, you make it a three, you have to make you make that a three score game. That game is over. He sh- he made a mistake. I'm glad he doesn't regret it because he shouldn't. It's his decision. But that decision cost his team the Super Bowl. Dan Gamble. That's what they call Gamble. him. Gamble. Dan Gamble. I have no problem with how he coaches. But in that scenario, I have to agree with Rudy. You kick the field goal in that scenario. Every scenario is a little bit different. In that scenario, they're up 24-10 in Candlestick Park. Is it even called Candlestick Park anymore? Whatever it's called over there. The 49er fans are... It's a completely different stadium. Whatever. Levi Stadium, Nick. Levi Candlestick Stadium. Candlestick Park to me, damn it. Um, as far as I know... Um, you have a chance right there to go up 17 and just completely put the crowd out the game, put the doubt back in Purdy mind, put the doubt in Debo and the rest of the gang mind. But at that moment, you decide to go for it. And like Rudy said, Reynolds should have caught the ball. He put the ball in his hands. And he dropped one of two ball, big passes that, that the team needed. But in that situation, Dan Gamble has to kick the field goal and go up 17. The 49ers offense is not moving the ball well at that time. Your defense is playing phenomenal at that time. At least as phenomenal phenomenal as a Detroit Lions defense can be. They played great at that moment. Purdy was not 
playing well at that moment. CMC was not getting chunks at that moment. Debo was under wraps at that moment. What are we doing here, Dan? Kick the field goal, go up 17, and now Purdy gets the ball, and now they're like, oh, shoot, we have to score. In that moment, they still didn't have to score to 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 make it a game, but you know they're just down two. But they did score immediately off a lucky play. And then they come back and get the fumble. We're like, oh, shit, it's, it's over. I literally wrote Rudy. I said, yep, game over because the momentum has totally swung. And shout out to Brock, um, Brock Purdy, man. He played Purdy good, man, really good, man. Um, Did you say he played Purdy good? He played Purdy good. I think Purdy he's been sitting good. on that one for a week. He's been sitting <laughs> yeah, on that one. I have. He played Purdy good. Um, Man, I thought Purdy was Lamar Jackson. He He stepped up in the pocket one time. And took off. I immediately ran to my phone and, and checked his pro day. I said, what the hell did he run <laughs> in a fucking 40? Because Brock Purdy just ran like Lamar Jackson and Steve Young combined. I said, what the freak? I didn't know he had wheels like that. But Purdy was decisive on every moment in the second half. He had a decision and he made it. He was back there sliding from defenders, getting out the way and, and, and making plays. Everybody said he's a game manager, but he managed to win that game. He made the plays. He 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 scrambled left. He threw it back right across his body. A cardinal sin as a quarterback, as you know, even though his receiver made a one-hand catch. Um, Purdy played freaking amazing, man. And all it comes back to was, would he have played that great if they were down 17 and everything mattered? But we, we won't even know because Dan Gamble decided to go for it. But Reynolds got to catch the ball. And at the end of the day, golf was playing amazing. If I'm I'm Coach Campbell, I, I also could you know agree with him because golf was playing amazing, and you're like, well, fourth and two, we're gonna get it, we're gonna find a way. They ran it on third and five, they got into fourth and two, and a couple other plays, like like Rudy said, the other field goal, he should have probably he probably should have took the next one too, but he didn't, and he hey he died on his sword, and he owned it. He came to the podium after he said, man, this is what I fucking do. What you going to do about it? We won the game. Y'all would be like, well, that's what he do. But we lost the game, so now y'all are, you know, coming back at me about it. But I live with it. I'm, and I'm a man of that, and that's what I, I live and I die by what I do. I'm going to draw a parallel to my exquisite coaching career in soccer. I coached oh, yeah. my, my kids' rec team in <laughs> soccer. Um, and look, man, we're 20, I'm 26, 27, 1 and 2 as a soccer coach over three years. I am not a soccer expert. But we had our we had a real tough game last week where it was against another team that was five and oh and one and we were gonna play them we're gonna play them in probably in the championship. We were fell behind one zero, first time we've been trailing in three years. So it, it showed a lot of character when we tied the game immediately back up and, and, and like less than a minute later. We took the lead. At that point, I'm a pressure I pressure the hell out of the other team with my forwards. I pushed my defense way up. Well, you know what I did after we went up two to one with four minutes left? I brought my guys back, and I'm like, they're not going to get this ball past midfield. I don't care about scoring another goal. I had one of my best players, who's a who could play everywhere. He, I just don't kick the ball out of bounds. Kick it out of bounds. The clock runs in soccer. He was kicking that ball into the net. Other team is screaming, they're cheating. No, we are doing what we got to do to win. So you have to adjust yourself, even in times of this is what I do. No, you got to do what you got to do to win. And kicking field goals, I'm not a fan of being a Tony Sperano lover, like when he back in the day with the Dolphins, kicking field goals and having the fist pumps and all that. But that was a time you kick a field goal. You adjust how you think to help your team win because this isn't a regular season game. This is the Super Bowl. Rudy, yeah. I, I appreciate uh, the sidebar story time. Uh, now the fans are going to know how great you are as a soccer coach. Someone get Real Madrid or Barcelona on the phone so we can get them a job. That's thing they're here nor there. But uh, we're going to segue to one of my favorite, favorite, and it's becoming a fan favorite segment of the show. It's called uh, Rudy's Rant. Uh, before we get there, Let's um, let's throw in a little clap. Nope. As you can hear, 
That's the crowd yeah. going nuts. For Rudy getting Ray. ready. Getting ready for Rudy Rodriguez Shamat to let himself let off some steam. Damn, I damn. feel like this one's going to be a good one. Oh, I think man. this one's going to ruffle feathers. Rudy, the floor is yours. I love that. That's awesome. I love it. As we, every show we do, we get better, man. That, 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 that's 1% better every day. I love it. I love it. I made a statement last week about how Patrick Mahomes irritates the hell out of me. And people from all over the place tell me how stupid I am. I, I'm going to be suffering for two more weeks of Taylor Swift bullshit and Travis Kelsey bullshit and, and, and Patrick Mahomes, Kermit the Frog voice on my guy's riot comedy videos. I'm looking forward to seeing them videos again, continue to see those videos. But let me tell you something. I got to listen to people say Patrick Mahomes played fantastic on Sunday. He did not. Can we stop? Let's stop the bullshit. The Kansas City Chiefs scored 17 points. They scored zero points in the second half of that game. So how did he play fantastic, sensational? He just wasn't as bad as Lamar. He played well for about a quarter and a half. He was hitting them all over the field. They were throwing the ball. He was throwing everything to Travis Kelsey. And Kelsey was catching everything until that last throw of the in the fourth quarter, which was, I mean, realistically, it wasn't actually a very good throw. He just threw it up there and hoped to God and prayed to the football gods that Valdez Scanling had dropped all the balls he's going to drop for the season, and this one will land in his stomach. And I give credit to Valdez Scanling. He turned his body, and that ball landed right in his stomach. But he, but he had to do a like a pirouette or something like that to turn around because he was running. That ball was underthrown. It was. I don't know what defense Baltimore was playing right there. That made no sense. I know they were cover zero, right? They were blitzing. But what the hell is that cornerback doing? Or whoever was covering that dude? Like, you cannot let that man go behind you. Well. And they, and, and they should they blitz up the middle. They should have blitzed up the middle so- to get – so when you're at zero, you're thinking the ball is gonna come out hot. But you have I'm sorry, have- Nick. I'm sorry, zero. I'm sorry, Nick. Um, can you please explain to the viewers and listeners what zero means? What zero is, that means it's an all out blitz. Everybody's fucking coming. They're they're everybody coming in, guns are blazing, they don't give a fuck about shit, and they're coming for the quarterback. You got a gap, you got a gap, you got a gap, you got a gap. We're sending more players than than you can pick up. But as a DB, what you have to have your eye open for, are they keeping somebody else extra in to give the quarterback just a little bit more time? And if I can see that, I know that I'm probably getting a deep route and I probably should get in my back pedal or I probably should get in my fucking um, Usain Bolt shoes and get ready to run because it's coming and it's coming hot. So they – made Kelsey stay in on that play. So they yeah, they did. So they gave Mahomes an extra half of two seconds unless the other person reads that that got Kelsey knows he's staying in the block and he comes in and add off that blitz and it it, it shortens the time just a little bit. That didn't happen. If that happens then okay you can still play zero coverage like your technique like you normally do. But in that case they didn't that mean you gotta you gotta know the ball's coming. So but it takes a real motherfucker to have pace, to have the eyes ready to see all that and know that somebody's coming at you and the ball's coming out hot or not. So in that certain situation, it's different. So Patty Mahomes in that situation, he's not able to throw, step into the throw sometimes or whatnot because it's zero. But he threw it perfectly for Scantlin. I mean, because you don't want to overthrow him or throw it past him because him catching with his hands is probably the worst thing ever. So him having his body able to help him is a good thing. You ever seen Scatlin catch with his hands? Yeah, well, no well look, at, I mean, look at him. He fell over when he was catching the ball. Yeah. He lost his balance. He has no balance. Yeah, but, it, was, it was a tough catch. Well, but they didn't, they didn't blitz up the middle. You got to blitz him up the middle, like overload that center guard gap because someone's going to get through. And they did not do that. And no one got near Mahomes on that play. No, Nobody got near him. No. Like you, can't, how are you in cover zero? No one gets near the quarterback. You can't go on the a, edges on Mahomes. Hmm? They kept a person in for, you know, a chip. But nobody down. got near him, and I, I, I mean, I, but outside of that throw, 
He didn't do shit in the second half. He was he wasn't good. They didn't score. They didn't move the ball. They moved the ball two possessions, and they got a field goal at the end of the, at, at the end of the first half. He was not elite. He wasn't great. Yeah, he was thirty for thirty nine, two hundred and forty two hundred forty two yards, something like that. Two hundred two hundred forty one yards. Like that's not elite. His defense was elite. He was not elite. So this blow job that they give Patrick Mahomes for being Patrick Mahomes, he wasn't great. He was good enough. Well. That said, I'm going to be tortured for the next two weeks of the most irritating fucking voice on the planet in Patrick Mahomes and listen to his dorky ass get on camera and try to sound like he's cool because we damn well know He's not he's not a cool dude. Wow. wow. In real life. If he didn't play football, where he'd be playing Fortnite somewhere. Wow. And um Fortnite. I can't you you. Huh? Ooh, well, I can't wait. Hey. Oh, the nerd the nerd congregation is gonna come for me because the Patrick, are look, coming for you. Look, Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in football. So don't get it twisted. I'm not doing the Ben Roethlisberger thing where he ain't still ain't top five. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in football. But he's kind of a dork. He's kind of he's kind of the he's kind of the mixed version of Peyton Manning, a dork. And we know Peyton Manning's a dork. But he's quite entertaining. I, I like oh, Peyton. very, very, very. But but Patrick Mahomes still irritates the shit out of me with his crybaby shit on the field when he gets breathed on. Did we have any of those in that? You know, remember the one where the was that the Ravens one where he took a a, a clothesline across Mahomes' head? That was yeah. that game, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know what? Finish him next time. Finish <laughs> him. Close line his head off. Wow. Knock his ass out of the game. If you're gonna do that, More knock his ass reference. out. Oh, Bro, wow. not, finish him. Knock his ass out of the game. So, I, I, I look. I got all the respect for that guy. That guy's amazing. He's amazing. But he didn't have some. Oh my God! Four hundred yards and five touchdown performance. He was okay. So he wasn't I just want you to know, Rudy, the, the listeners are not going to hear you and remember you saying that guy's of amazing not. and I respect him. They're going to remember yeah. you calling him a dork and uh, a dork. you assassinating the Fortnite gaming community. So my, my, my kids play Fortnite. I think it's the stupidest game on earth. And I, will tell you, and I will tell you this last, this last thing. They're, his fans were calling me all kinds of names. I mean, didn't one say I probably have never had sex before? I, I mean, I, I, I guarantee you I have no issues there. I have three children and one on the way. Um, so y- you can kiss my ass. And my wife is gorgeous, and you dream you wish you had a wife that looked like mine. So you can suck a dick. Ooh. Okay? But okay. well, let me tell you something. San Francisco, please, God, don't let me down. Brock Purdy, you better be pretty good. Pretty good. Debo, you better come with it. CMC, Ayuk, all those boys, do not let me down. I cannot watch this guy win another Super Bowl this fast with this trash-ass team he has because the Chiefs are not good. Their defense is. Their defense is great, but the te- offense is not good. They scored 17 points. Hey, my retort, my retort to you is just like you said that in your great soccer <sighs> team career, that you just had your player kick the ball out because of the, you know, the situation. Yeah. Maybe Andy Reid had Pat Mahomes kicking the ball out of bounds the whole time and let the clock run because he knew that the the Baltimore oh, Ravens would score. That one drive, they were like nine minutes in the first half. Yeah. So maybe but he threw they, for but he, would, but he threw for one seventy four in the first half. Maybe they adopted your coaching strategy for Mahomes. Maybe. Maybe they, maybe they, got, maybe they did, but I, but you, you know you what? Have I'm a st- book on Amazon for coaching that I don't know about. Not at all. I should write one. I, sh- I should not. Should. I should write one. You should. You know, because it's gonna, said, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna involve, it's gonna involve getting my backup linebacker to put a helmet under the chin of the starting quarterback and put him in the concussion booth. Wow. But then you'll, then you will see how the NFL magically makes that concussion booth disappear. As Patrick Mahomes will be back on the field five yeah. seconds later. Are you, are, you, are you saying that that it's scripted? You know what that being said, let, I'm sorry it's, I even it, asked that. I, I, I don't believe it's scripted, yeah. but, but, but I, I don't believe I don't believe the NFL scripted. I don't at all. But I do okay. believe that Patrick Mahomes gets gifted calls that he doesn't deserve, 
and people act like this dude is in like four foot four and 45 pounds. He's 6'4", 250. He's the size of a truck. Okay. And you can't hit him. I love it. I love it. Rudy's rants is always colorful. We're able to make amazing clips from it. And actually, for me, the most entertaining thing is reading you guys' comments. Oh, my God. You guys don't hold back. I love it. Uh, with that being said, I'm, we're going I'm to... I'm sorry. One more thing. I'm going to share this thing. with all y'all. I'm going to share more this. One more. The last thing. This is the last thing. Before the last thing again. 80% of the people agree with me. They just don't comment. The only people that comment are the ones that want to tell me I'm an idiot. Because the ones that think I'm a genius, they just like the post. <laughs> I love that. I love the mic drop. Nick, you see the mic drop? He dropped the mic. I see he did. Um, well, with that being said, we're going to go into my personal favorite type of the show. It... <laughs> Nick, what, what are you looking that's the, that's the That's the audience clapping I, for. I was wondering for... when did they get here? Yeah, you know, they're excited to hear Don's Dimes. <laughs> Don's Dimes. This one uh, hit me today when I was working out. And it was just, you know, it's great because you both are Miami Heat fans. I'm a Chicago Bulls fan for the listeners and the viewers. And I was just thinking, let me just throw this at these guys. There's a lot of trade uh, kerfuffle going out on, on, on different news uh, wires and, you know, possible moves on the way. So I just said to myself, let me ask the guys, what, what one move would you make for your Miami Heat if salary cap didn't matter? And you can just trade one guy for any other guy in the league. Run it back. Run it back for us one more time. Okay. Example. Right now, you can trade Jimmy Butler for Steph Curry. One move for your Miami Heat. That I can make. To put you over. Yeah, you can make. What would be the one move? And salary cap has nothing to do with that. You know what? One move. For your my Miami one, Heat. My one move that I've been fighting for for the last three to four, three, two years. Let's get Lori Markinen out of Utah and pair him with Bam. Bam needs another big guy with him. I don't know who we would trade for him. At this point, I don't give a damn who it is. But we need a stretch big man to go along Bam who also could bang and get some rebounds and do a slight of the – a little bit of the dirty work. Not all of the dirty work. I just need him to sweep the floor. I don't need him to mop. I don't need him to mop. <laughs> I just need him to sweep. And Laurie Markinen would be a great person that goes with him. I wanted Kristoff Porzingis this offseason, but huh, <laughs> the Celtics beat us to that move. But I will settle for Laurie Markinen. I, I think don't I think, think that's right. settling because, remember, my Chicago Bulls drafted him. And um, we're okay. great at building assets and trading them away. I just I want to throw that out there. unit right now, and I think we'll be great. For who? I don't know. That's not my job, Rudy. That's what he, but that's what he asked. All right. Give him Josh Richardson, Duncan <laughs> Robinson, and freaking. No, it's just one player, one player for one player. That's it. One, one player, player for one player. One okay, player. If I had to, then Tyler Hero would be gone. Sorry. Okay. I'm giving him a young player who's up and coming. He could be a star. Maybe, but for the value to match, I'm going to give them a good player. And I think we can live without Tyler. But I think the additional Laurie will be better. Now we have Jimmy, Bam, Laurie, um, Terry. We have enough guards out there to do enough and damage around the world. And we won't get exploited as much on Tyler Hero when teams just go um, Tyler Hero hunting on us. Um, so that would be my move. One for one, done deal. Interesting. Interesting. So does the does the does they have to match in salary and stuff? Just one no, I one. said salary cap yeah. doesn't right. matter. Doesn't matter. Okay, Just okay. So one, man, move, one player for one so, player. So Nick, you're the, you're a terrible GM. Um, awful, absolutely no, awful. No, no, because I, no, no, that's not what he, that's not what he said. I would trade Thomas Bryant <laughs> for Laurie Markkinen, or I would trade Cole Swider for Laurie Markkinen, or uh, exactly, he's in the G League. Um, he's the, he's the two-way player um, who's who's a DMP today. Oh, the Heat won, by the way. We broke our seven-game losing streak. Thank well, you, freaking lords. Um, Rudy, Rudy. Yeah. You might as well give them some hot Cheetos. Some hot yeah, well, that's what I'm going to do because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to make the deal for. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to trade, and I'm going to shock you here, but 
if I could do, I, I'll keep it realistic because obviously I'm not going to be able to trade Thomas Bryant for a great player. I'm trading Tyler Hero for LeBron James. I would bring LeBron James back to Miami in a heartbeat. I know what I say about him. And, of course, Nick, you should want him back because he is the GOAT, according to you. Remember, you said he's the GOAT. Or do you not truly believe that? That's a terrible idea. Okay, why is that a terrible idea? No, LeBron no. James is still six foot nine. He's no, still no, 265 no. pounds. He's still a monster. Let me finish my turn. You made, you made your trade giving, up, giving away Tyler Hero for Laurie Markkinen. I'll give up Tyler Hero for LeBron James. I'm going to do it for a number of reasons. One, Jimmy Butler will have a lot of room to kill people. LeBron will have room to kill people. LeBron is still a great player. I mean, let's not lie to ourselves. I, I can't lie to myself and say he's still not a great player. He's not a top five player, but he's a great player. And he's still gonna and he's still gonna get you got get guys like Duncan Robinson wide open shots. And he doesn't have to play and Terry Rozier, he don't have to play and he doesn't have to play the point. You can I mean there there are so many things that remember how he was so great in Miami? He dropped that big motherfucker into the post. He dominated games from the post. And at this age, that's where he would be most effective. Is in the post. I mean, my God, can you imagine the, 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 the many alley-oop dunks that Bam would get? It would look like Goron passing, or Wade passing to Bam, some shit like that. Remember when Goron was giving Bam dunk left and right before Bam can make a 12-footer? I mean, I would make that. Uh, oh, and it would make my tickets a lot more valuable, so I could sell them for a lot higher price. Uh, um, so that would be uh, the trade I would make, and I would I would bet a lot of money that the Heat would be in the finals. And they would win the championship. They'd win the championship. I knew that you loved LeBron. (laughs) I knew it. This whole time, this was just a ploy (laughs) to get the trade done today. Oh, my God. I would be happy to have the guy back. I still don't like him. I think he's a manipulator and a massive egomaniac. But I'm not going to sit here and lie to myself. I'm going to lie to myself. I've been, been, straight. Straight. I've been straight out played by thinking that Rudy doesn't like this guy. Well, in fact. Don't. I, I don't like him. I've never bought a jersey. I've never said, bought a t-shirt. No, no. You're LeBron's <laughs> biggest fan. <laughs> That's what it turns That's out to. That's your page on Twitter. I love LeBron, huh? I knew that was your page on Twitter. Established uh, 20, 2008. 2008. Yeah, I knew that was his page. I love LeBron. Would you make that trade, Nick? Of course. Why wouldn't I make that look trade? If would I- you make that? Would you make that trade before Laurie Markkinen? Actually, I I wouldn't. I would get Laurie. You for, wouldn't want the goat for the James. For the uh, team, for, but every team is constructed differently, man. Every mm-hmm. team got a match. Mix and match to to his liking. I mean, LeBron would be fine here, but I think we'll get the most out of our team with a person like Laurie next to Bam with Jimmy and Terry. So where would Laurie be playing? Shooting threes? He'll be doing whatever the heck we want him to do because he, he's a fucking... Because <laughs> Bam, Bam, Bam would just get in the way. No, but Laurie, cause he, cause he's outside. He can go outside, inside. So I'm going to have this 7-foot-1 guy shooting 25-foot. Oh, my God. 25-footer shooting. I'm pretty sure he shoots 10 a game, and he shoots them at a high clip. I'm he shoots 10 threes. I got to go look this up now. This, that, that, that's crazy. Cause, I'm, I'm I mean, pretty he, sure he, he shoots a nice amount, and he makes them. I'm pretty sure he's not just in the paint. Not I, I think no, at this point, we're, we're, we're speaking uh, in generalities, but that that's a perfect segue out of Don's Dimes into – a very, very controversial topic that's going to come on right now. Who would you, you trade, Don? Oh, here he goes. I feel like I was out and you pulled me back in. Um, if I can tra- make one per trade for my beloved Chicago Bulls, I would get Zach Levine out of there because I actually am a big fan of Zach Levine. And I would want him to go succeed somewhere else. And I would bring Giannis to Chicago. Um, I'm a big Giannis fan. I feel like we can build around him. Salary cap doesn't matter. I feel like he's a cornerstone for the Chicago uh, oh, demographic. Yeah, yeah. And and I think he would embrace the pressure of trying to win the first behind Michael Jordan. 
I think Giannis would embrace that. So that would be my trade. But perfect segue, Rudy. I thank you for uh, including me in this riff. Perfect segue into the most controversial topic I think we've ever discussed. Our top five players currently in the NBA. Let me start. Uh, Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum. You guys go. Okay. Jason Tatum is not even in the top five. He's not top You're six. disrespectful and Bean Town is going to come. He's not even the best player on his team. Yep. Stop. See, now that's just blasphemy, and this is not about me, but I just and want I, you to know everyone in Massachusetts will come after your neck, Rudy. Everyone in Massachusetts, including the Wahlberg family, Mark Wahlberg is coming after you. All right. Well, we all know that Jalen Brown has been the best player on their team for the longest, but because they want to push the, Debatable. the, they Debatable. Push the whole light skin bravado oh, against we're the, not going to do that we're not going to do that yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not going to we're, we're not going to speak oh. about pigmentation right now we're going to oh, talk okay. about talent we're okay. speaking about okay. pigmentation yeah, Nick, give me your I'm five if we're just looking give me at your talent. five okay give me your five i'm gonna go at number one first that's what no don't go to number one no, you gotta go yeah. first. come on man. I mean, it, otherwise no, nobody cares after number one <laughs> what well, that's not true I think because right. my, I think because of my your show, five, you're allowed to do what you want. Because because this is how I'm breaking it down. Who would I want in a game seven of a playoff series running my team? So this is how Jimmy, I, Jimmy Butler. So at number five, there's Jimmy Butler. I don't. I that's who I want on my team in my foxhole. I in, your want foxhole. in my foxhole, when, it, when people are like, hey, man, I, I, in, in, in my foxhole, you could be in my foxhole any day because I'm ready to go to war with you. It would be Jimmy Butler because I know when push comes to shove and that shove comes to push, he's going to push that shove to the push and shove. Yep, that's what Jimmy does. Y'all heard it. If y'all didn't get what I said, I said what I said because I meant it. Yep. Jimmy at number five because... Let, I'm being serious right now. I'm being serious. Jimmy at number five just because, um, like I said, man, when it's a big-time game and a big-time moment against anybody, he don't care who it is, he's going to step up and he's going to carry your team probably further than they probably should go, as we've seen the last few years. At number four, I still have Steph Curry at number four because I know nobody – because if I have a good team around him, there's nobody with a better impact on the offensive end to him still to this day. You can yell Joel Embiid, but he doesn't move the needle for everybody else on the court like Steph Curry could get anybody else on the court open. Just like the other day when Draymond was wide open at the top of the key and Steph should have passed it to him, but he just, well, if I pass it to Draymond with four seconds, what's going to happen? The ball's going to end up in the rafters. Well, so, so, so Steph Curry doesn't pass it to him. So I still have Steph at four. So at number three, I have Luca at three. Luca's just amazing, man. He can do anything, everyone on the court, give it to you any way you want it. He needs a better team over there in Dallas. Their team is not going to cut it. There's nothing about that team is good at all. Um, he can't defend. I mean, I don't need him to defend when he's dropping 75. That's what I'm getting the rest of these guys to do. <laughs> like. What the heck are the rest of y'all doing? He's scoring 75. Um, go put your body on the line and, and, and draw a charge or something. <laughs> what are you here for? I'm paying you all this money to pass him the ball, take a charge, defend, grab a rebound. At number two is still Giannis. Giannis is number two. He's still one of the better players in the world. He can do everything. He moves the needle. He dunks on you. He can take the ball at the court. He can still defend. He can't on-ball defend for shit. I, I said that forever. Everybody was like, why wouldn't you put him on KD years back? Why don't you put him on Jimmy? Because he can't move left to right like that. He can be – he's a great help defender. Amazing. He could come from the left to right. He could come catch a ball on top of the backboard any day of the week. He's still amazing in that scenario. But one-on-one -on -one defensively, no way if you watch NBA basketball at all. And at number one, it's the Joker, man. Joker got the best eyes, the best game in the league. He can make every pass. He makes everybody better. Joker's the guy. He can score. He doesn't miss a three-point shot. Every time I see him shoot a three-pointer, it goes in. It's the most 
craziest thing I ever seen. The whole playoffs, they said that he shot like 55% from the field. Six, I never seen him miss that whole playoff. It was the most ridiculous thing ever. Every angle you wanted off one foot, two foot step back, he give it to you any type of way, and they still get everybody involved on the offense. They talk about his defense, but somehow – he makes stops and he, he doesn't get a score the daily, nightly, every, like everybody thinks he does. Somehow he still does enough on defense to get it done. But on offense, he's a special, special talent. And he's too big for a lot of players. He just knocks him out, dropping in the post, or he can bring it from the outside. He has handles somehow. He gets he blows by people with a six point nine three forty. He blows by people on the on, on offense. It's 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 ridiculous. Um, I don't have Embiid in there because when it comes to a game seven or when I need him, I don't think I could I could depend on him. LeBron, he's a little bit older. I just I have him a little bit outside of the top five. I have him around six seven because I would still prefer to have LeBron on my team when I need him than anybody else in the league. I have SGA as an honorable mention. Jason Tatum at about fifteen. Um, <laughs> Okay, that's ridiculous. I mean, that's ridiculous. No, nah, no, nah, I have, I have, I have, I have Tatum at about ten. But Tatum comes and goes. Either he's gonna go eight for twenty three, or he's gonna go sixteen for twenty two. Yeah. Listen, what, I won't accept. I won't accept your Jason Tatum slander. With that being said, Rudy, the floor is yours. You're disrespectful. I, I, You're disrespectful. I have, I have a question for 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 Tricky Nikki. Um, I forgot what the question was, <laughs> but I had a question for you, and I don't know where it went in my brain. Oh, oh, yes. I remember my question now. Joker's the best player in the league. Yes. According to you. Yep. Where where would you have Joker all time? All time? All time. Because if you're the best player in the league. Yeah. And he's now been in probably in your opinion for like the last three years, four I think, years. I think Joker is creeping around top fifteen, eighteen right now in history. You talking about the history, right? Mm-hmm. I think he's yes. creeping around fifteen to eighteen. He wins another championship. Woo, he's up there with Durant around fourteen, thirteen. Okay. He wins another one after <laughs> that. Ooh, Lord, give me strength. <laughs> I don't know. Where would he be then? He he might be moving your guy Bird out of the top ten. Okay, because yeah, what you, you basically guys have disrespected Boston you, enough. You you basically you disrespected have Boston enough. You, you've based I mean I have Bird as number two player all time, yeah. and, I, and everyone in Boston loves me for it. That's why I don't think they have a problem with my opinion on Jason Tatum because I think Jalen Brown's better, and I thought he's been better for years. But that's my opinion. Um, and Larry Bird is a two inch shorter three inch shorter version of Nikola Jokic yeah who you consider a top 15 player top 18 player whatever and he had three MVPs and three final NBA championships um three MVPs back to back to back so yes that's why I think Larry Bird is the best second best player of all time that said my top five is well my number 25 player is LeBron James but um I I would still take LeBron on my team. I still, would. but you know, he's not. Top, he's he's in the top twenty. He's not. I don't think he's top number seven. Like fuck no. He's top twenty, top fifteen. He's not number seven. He can't. No 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 chance. Are you telling me that you would take LeBron over Kevin Durant? No uh, way. Rudy, Rudy, no the way. Viewers are are on on their pins and needles waiting for your top five. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm dragging you're it out. Going around the world. So you're going Shea the world. Gil- SGA Shea Gilgis Alexander. This man is number five. This kid is the truth. He's averaging 31.3 points per game. Last year was 31.4. If you thought last year was a fluke, there was no fluke. This kid is shooting 55% from the field. Honorable mention. He's a 6'6 guard. They were 40 and 42 last year. They're going to win 55 games this year. The dude is a beast. He's an absolute beast. And for the love of God, they traded him and like 47 first round picks to the OKC Thunder for Paul George. <laughs> Who won that trade? That dude is a stud. I mean, absolutely sensational. And he's what, 25 years old? Oh my God. That kid is scary good. 
Number four is Steph Curry. Steph Curry is still that dude. That dude, I mean, we were watching the game the other day. I mean, what was that game? I think we were watching at the same time. Where he's just doing, oh, no. It was yesterday. It was yesterday. Yeah. He's my boss. Step back. Like, like this guy is, Rudy was like, I mean, he had too much. He's dribbling too like, much. Like, dribbling too much. <laughs> Three. And you sit here like, God, only that dude can do that. Like, no one else can do that. This man had 46 last week against the Lakers, only to watch his team screw up the defense on LeBron with four seconds left. Kaminga. I mean, my God. And the little number two with the puffy, curly hair who, for some reason, overplayed and trying to make a steal. I don't know what the hell he was thinking about, which created the lane. I'm not even trying to pronounce his name. But Steph Curry is still averaging 27 and a half game, a game. Let me tell you something. If Steph Curry wasn't on the Warriors right now, they'd have three wins. They have three wins. They're twenty and twenty-four. They'd have three wins, five, five wins, five wins. Clay Thompson is washed. Draymond Green is Draymond Green. He's been missed half the season because he can't control himself. And I, I will always say he's a role player. The fact that people want to put him in the Hall of Fame is an embarrassment to me. I mean, we just might as well make the Hall of Fame the Hall of Good Role Players because we have a whole bunch of good role players being inducted into the Hall of Fame, which is supposed to be for the elite of the elite. It's no longer the elite of the elite. It's the who played really, really well in China or Argentina or in Italy or in every other league but the NBA. Because those dudes would have been in the NBA if they were good enough to be in the NBA. No one wants to play in Turkey for 15 years. With that said, I'm going on a tangent. Steph Curry's that dude, man. I mean, what he does, he's 35 years old, bro. 35. What is his cardio plan? Because nobody, I don't care what LeBron does with his body, LeBron does not run like Steph Curry runs in a game. That man must, must run 10, 15 miles a game, just running in circles to get away from people. And let's remember, he still weighs 180 pounds. And he's 6'2". The dude is unbelievable. And he's still shooting 46.5%, 46% from the field, 41% from three, 93% from the line. I mean, I'd like to see him start shooting free throws backwards to make it a challenge. To see. And he'd probably still shoot 85%. Or do him, as a hook, do him as a hook shot. Maybe that'll make it more interesting. Number three, Giannis Antetokounmpo. 61% from the field, 31 and 12 right now. He's having a great year offensively, but defensively he can't guard. He can't guard anybody outside. I, I hate that they make him guard smaller guys. He can't do it. I agree with Nick. He cannot do it. Can't. When they were yelling last year, why isn't he guarding Jimmy? Because Jimmy will he blow can't. right by him. He can't. he can't. Jimmy will blow right by him. Like I, I, I can't. Like the dude is amazing, but he's amazing based on his skill set because his skill set is almost zero. Offensive yeah. skill set is so limited. He can't shoot. He can't make free throws, but, man, he is a hell of a guy that, I mean, to, that can get 17 feet in two steps with his elbow here and his elbow here skill. and get to – huh? That's a skill, Rudy. Not being able to shoot? I mean, yeah, you know because you can't shoot. I know. Um, <laughs> but there's other things that, that still are skills that he's amazing at that other people aren't. Look, he's a great rebounder. He, he's a great help defender. Well, offensively, he's offensively. Point shooter, but he has skills. He can, offensively, he's, he's, offensively, he's completely limited. If you can wall him off the way that he did a few years ago, even, you remember that? He couldn't do anything. Like, he couldn't do anything because he can't shoot for anything. And he can't, and he has no post game, which is part of the problem. His post game. But, but, but I mean, I mean it's, it's average. I mean, but he's not. It's average. So what's his great skill? Then why haven't why don't everybody wall him off? It sounds silly. because they don't have because they don't have the players to do it because most guys don't want to play defense because no, most teams because don't have he heat. Rudy because he's that good. No, because they get bowed in the face with a damn big ass elbow and then have it called a, a defensive block. I thought you liked that. Thought you liked that type of basketball. I, I <laughs> like it, but, but the reality is, do you still want to get elbowed in the face by an offensive player? Mm -hmm. I think they give way too much. No, I told you, I think they give way too much. Slack for offense because the reality is he commits offensive fouls all the time that don't get calls. You what? They put, they put all the time. Put, I want defense. Let, let, let my defensive player do this to him. Boom. Put, and I love it. 
He put a lot of pressure on the refs. Well, if yo, your defense, yes. is, they scared to do that. They, you shouldn't take one like that. But you know what? Yeah. You don't know if okay. you're going to take that battle all day. You're going to get hit back by him. Great. Right. And, I, and I will tell you that if he had some actual skill offensively, like real skill, Oh my God! Like, yeah. it, like it, if he could actually learn something from Akeem Olajuwon in his fifty thousand dollars classes, and had to actually post up, oh my God, it would be ridiculous. So you want him to uh, score? So you want him to score sixty points a game? Because if he learned, if he was like, no, he can't have it all. Why do you think he's shooting sixty one percent, Nick? He's dunking the ball literally ten times a game. Let's be real. Yeah, he dunks it. Ill to get there. <laughs> that let's get, let's get the two, Rudy. Uh, if we don't, if we don't get the two, we won't. Number get two, the two. Num- number two is Nikola Jokic. Nikola Jokic is a skilled big man. A man that can shoot a three even when Anthony Davis' long arm is in his face, throw the ball straight up into the air, not look at the rim, and it somehow goes in. Yes, every three he takes somehow goes in. I don't know how. It is the ugliest goddamn shot on the planet, and yet it goes in. I can't believe you're going to He's a great rebounder. You already know where I was going with this. I, I told you this yesterday. Good. I I'm, I'm, and, and you're a fucking idiot who has them not even in the top five. So that's a crazy thing in itself. I can't but believe this. he can't jump freaking onto a curb. Defensively, because of how the game is played today, he actually defends better than he should because people want to shoot jump shots from the perimeter. The reality is if you actually went at his ass and didn't go away from him, you could probably score on him because he doesn't move very well laterally. Come on, let's be real. We're going to do this. The, the, just to give you a note, the D- Denver Nuggets are 32-15 and 15 when he's on the court. They've played 48 games. They're 1-0 and 0 when he doesn't play. I'm not saying they can win without him, so don't worry. I'm not saying that. What a I'm, I am I am saying, well, you know what? You know what's great about him? He plays games, unlike these other pussies in the league. What I'm saying is, is that he has a freaking big-time roster, and you know he has a great roster. Jamal Murray's a stud. Aaron Gordon has found a, a perfect that home. That, that one of those Jamal Murray didn't even play. And same thing, which even makes it crazier that the one and zero game, Jokic and Murray did not play, and they won by nine. DeAndre, which means, they, they, could still which means which, and he's like four hundred years old. Which yeah, means, which means they have a good roster. You just confirmed what I said. No, they have a really good roster. They, he makes they have a really, they have a really good roster. They do. They and, and, he, and he's a great player. He's a star. Um, there was a funny thing that I saw recently on Gilbert Arenas' show. Gil Arenas, Gil's whatever he called. Well, it's Lexi now because he lost the three point contest. To him. She beat him in the three point contest. But no, the, the the crazy thing was they were talking about that yesterday. About who who's a star and who's a megastar. And I agree with him. There's two megastars: LeBron and Steph. Oh man! Oh, I don't know what happened there. Oh, there you go. I don't know what that happened. You're back. You're back. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. So, uh, LeBron and Steph, they transcend basketball. Yeah. You anywhere you go, Giannis said recently that he went to Switzerland and no one knew who he was. The seven foot one, multiple time MVP, went to Switzerland and nobody knew who this tall ass dude was. Nobody. That's crazy. That means you're not a you're not a megastar. You're an all-star. You're a superstar in the NBA, but not around the world. Jokic is a star in the NBA. He is not a mega star around the world. If he walked down the street, half the folks wouldn't know who the hell he was. Be a big, big white dude. But that's because. All right. Okay. So I think Jokic is number two. Number one, and people will slander me and say I'm crazy. But I've been saying this for years. Joel Embiid is the most talented basketball player in the NBA, period. What that man does at seven foot one and 290 pounds, and you know I've harped on this for quite some time, I wish he'd play in the paint more. I hate that he shoots 27, 28 footers. I hate it. That man is averaging 35 0.3 points per game and 11 and a half rebounds, 5.7 assists, 1.8 blocks on 53 and a half percent shooting, 36.6 from three. He shoots 12 free throws a game. He was the MVP last year. And if he plays enough games this year, because he might not, he'll be the MVP again. He's had 30. He averaged 30 the last three seasons. He scored 22 of 23 games over 30. 
if you think Philadelphia's roster is good, I have sand on the beach to sell you. I, I can take you to the beach and sell you the sand because there's no way in hell that you're going to tell me that the Philadelphia 76ers roster is remotely close to Denver, Milwaukee, hell, the Knicks, the Celtics. Their roster is basura. Outside of Maxi, the rest of those guys, including your bum ass Pat Beverly, they suck. They are garbage. That team, that team this year, with you want a bigger sample size? With Joel Embiid on the court, they're 26 and 8. When he does not play, they are 3 and 9. That team would not win 30 games if that man was not on the team this season. But that really, guy, that, you don't, you want, that's a that bigger team, sample size. Maxi didn't play those games either, some of those games either. Great. I don't have them in front of me. So you can't use that if you don't even have proof of it because I don't know if you're just making that up or what. No, Maxi they, are, out. they are 3 and 9 when Joel MB does not play. When he plays, they're 26 and 8. Rudy, period. They that is a stack. That's a out. They had Ubre out. They had Ubre. So, okay, again, again, I guarantee you, they won games when Ubre didn't play. I guarantee you, they won games when Ubre did not play. So, unless you show me some, some data, nobody, show me the data. But you, nobody, know, you have no idea. Show me no, the data. You nobody, show. nobody wins without their star player. Unless Joe, you and be, really? Joe? Jo- Joel and well, well actually when, when the when Memphis when Memphis had no John Moran, they were like 24 and 4. You're talking about that team. Besides that, okay, okay. Who's okay. the superstar? Again, again, the point well, again, Joel Embiid is that dude. I just wish he'd be a little tougher and not cry so damn much. Toughest finals he had. I don't care. That's a team game. I don't want it's a team. Where was James Harden? In the big moments, what did he do? You, you, you he's not what are you talking about, James Harden? He wasn't he wasn't hurt. Also, he wasn't, is he hurt? What's he hurt? That's another he part hurt? about him being great. He has to be healthy. If he can't stay healthy, how can he so 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 basically okay, so what so then Jason Tatum can't be in the top fifty because in game seven he got hurt. No, um, no, you're talking about what uh, all, right, about all, right, all right, all right. Joel Embiid is carrying Joel Embiid's been Joel Embiid's been carrying a franchise. With guys that quit, like Ben Simmons, like James Harden, all these motherfuckers who've quit on him so, and, and act like bitches, that dude has done everything he can. If the man scores 38 and has 15 rebounds and shoots 70% from the field and they lose, how is that on him? That, 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 that happened in the playoffs? It's happened. It's happened to him over and over again throughout his career. No, in the playoffs. Dude, no, so you're basically so you're so you're, so your de- your determination is the playoffs, one hundred percent. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I do. It doesn't matter. I do need you in a regular season, but if you can't also produce, really, like, really, then, then really, that, that's into it. That's why so he hasn't. Let, let's let, 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 let's take let's take a quick look at the playoffs since you say he doesn't because uh, uh, yeah, and, 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 and you know what, and, and if Jimmy Bro- and I. And I love Jimmy Butler, but Jimmy Butler misses too many fucking games in regular season. But he's Period. Up on another level when Period. you need him. And you know what? And you know what happened? He got hurt in the playoffs too. He and you know what? And, and his game went way down after he turned his angle versus the Knicks Lisa in the playoffs. In the finals, not way down. No, nah, it went. It went. That, it, his shooting percentage. He's a fifty-five percent shooter from the field that he, last year, and he shot under fifty the rest of the playoffs after that Knicks one play where Josh Hart. Completely threw his foot under him to hurt him, and he did it on purpose. And I stand by that. Right. And I love Jimmy Butler, and I think Jimmy Butler in the playoffs is the best player in basketball. So I mean, I've like seen him be forty three and thirty nine every year. Okay, but you're so you'd rather your team be fifty nine and, and twenty three and yeah, and lose yeah, I would, now. I would, because you know what? I'm gonna go and think we're gonna win. And if you thought that he was gonna win the fucking the series versus the Bucks. After the bullshit we had last year, you're drunk and you're lying. No, you're I, lying. I didn't. You're think, lying. I didn't think that. Exactly. So what are you talking about? But Jimmy Butler had a series of the ages. But I also, of the ages. I also thought that Philly would have beat Atlanta. The name the, the, the means Jimmy Butler to be better than fucking Giannis because he married that team and he's beating Giannis twice Giannis. in the playoffs in wipeout fashion. Hey, Giannis also got himself a championship during uh, that time. Yeah, he did. He did. He did, yeah. which means you need a team. Which means you need a team around you 
and not just one player. But I also need my big guy to be a All big right. guy when I need him. You just don't need, him. don't need to go to the block. When he needs to go to the block. Well, he, 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 he's, he's, he's been doing it a lot more this year. In, big, uh, in the he's big been, time games, he's out there shooting jump shots where he should be down there on the block getting an easy point. Rudy, he's, he's taking, he's taking, he's taking, he's, he's taking three. He's taking three threes per game, he not fucking more, ten. Rudy. He oh, he can be number one. He's the most talented basketball player in the NBA. He is the most talented dude in the NBA. He's averaging 35 and 12, 11. And he's been and he's gonna be the MVP again in this damn league. He is damn sure the best player. I didn't say he's the best winner. I say he's the best player. Because you know what? Michael Jordan was the best player in 1988 and 1989 and 1990 while he was getting his ass kicked by the Detroit Pistons. But he didn't so with the bullshit about how you can't be the best player if you're not winning in the playoffs. And last I checked, Michael Jordan got swept in the playoffs. That was early. And he was still, and he was still the best player in the NBA at that very moment. Rudy, what Embiid is in the year? What eight, nine, ten? Come on now, you got to figure it out. So you mean you mean ten after he missed the first two with injury? Okay, eight. You got to figure it out, Rudy. Come on. Now. You got to figure it out. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's no, he's been playing for six years, really. Seven yeah. years. Yeah. All right, let's, let's let's take a look at the playoffs. Since I'm I'm not, I'm gonna give you the numbers because you huh? said he doesn't play well. He, he doesn't he doesn't show up. He doesn't show up according yeah. to you. You, said he, you, show, said, you show. said he doesn't show up yeah, no, because no. he has teammates like James Harden who disappeared. Oh, he was, but they were both. Disappearing. They was just James. Really? It wasn't just James. Okay. And be and be let's see. I'm gonna give you one here right here. 30, 22, 36, 39, 40, 27, 17, 37, 22, 31. That was when they lost to the freaking Hawks in um game seven. 17. That was okay. So you had 17 one game. You know, LeBron had eight points against the Mavericks, right? Yeah, we're gonna and we lost the, and we lost the final series because that motherfucker missed out. And fucking got pumped by J.J. Barea and Deshaun Stevenson. So you want to go that way about a guy having a bad game? Get the fuck out of here. Go, go ahead. What do you do next year? 19, 31, 33, 21, 20, 33, 18, 24, 17, 20. Yeah. You know, beat, you know who beat him? Remember? The Heat beat him. The guy the Heat beat him. And he was hurt. And we knew he was hurt. We knew he was hurt. Oh, my. 26. Look. You just said he was a play. He, okay, let's see. Last year versus Boston, 30, 34, 33, 26. The last game they got wiped out. Yes, that did happen. He had 15. Well, I need him. Yeah, okay. That's great. I, those games great. that I need you. Okay, who's, who's, your, who's your top five? Okay, Jimmy Butler's never won a finals. I love Jimmy Butler. He's never won a finals. He got there twice. What, your guy. Okay, has, okay, he's great. He, he's, he's never won a finals. You just said game seven of the finals. Conference um, finals. Now it's the con- so you you've changed the number. What was the number? Who was, the, who was number? Who was number five? You said Luca. Finals. Conference finals. He fucking did in game seven. At least he been they lost. The they lost. They lost. Shorter time. So you can actually tend to fend apart par. He got so sensitive for a fan. But and that's the top five guys that really. pussy. Shut the fuck up. Rudy. You, you have a different definition for yourself on the guys that you chose. Yeah, yeah. A different definition. But you top five. Yeah. There's nothing done what you said he needed to do. I said at least he went to the conference finals. And he stepped up in that big moments in a game seven. And when mm-hmm. you need Luca, he's there. It ain't because of him. It ain't because he went out there and scored 15 mm-hmm. or 17. No, the, the guys that he guards score 52. Oh, get the fuck out of here. The guys that he guards score him at will. Yeah, yeah. Get so was Jalen Brunson good in Dallas? Yeah. Why does he tra- why was he let go? Why did they let him go to the Knicks? Because they're fools. No, because they play the same fucking position. Because Luka Doncic is a fucking ball hog. No, they- Luka Doncic is a- Luka Doncic needs the ball to be successful. He could have made it work. No, they couldn't because they're both ball dominant players. Because when he was out, because when he was out, Brunson was dropping forty. You end up getting Kyrie. I don't even- come on now, please. It's pretty please. Okay. All right, man. Luka Doncic is top five ahead of LeBron, right? Would you take LeBron first in the top, in, in Game Seven over Luka, or Luka over Do- LeBron? Right now. Right now. Right now. Give me Luka. You're lying. The oh. goat. So the goat. The goat. He's gone. He's at thirty. At thirty nine, would you take MJ or would you take Luka or MJ at thirty nine? No, don't. Luka, cut it out. Don, at thirty nine, would you take MJ or Luka? At 39 in the game seven. No, cut it out. I'm going to take MJ. 
I am too. You're taking. I am too. That's just. I am too. My, I'm, I'm, my and I'm taking LeBron over Luca in a game seven. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to take MJ. I'm going. And this shit. And this listen, shit. Listen. Yeah. Turn your fucking hat. Listen, 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 guys. Listen, guys. Listen, guys. Listen, guys. With that being said, this was a, a riveting mm-hmm. um, top five East. discussion. We're going to be wrapping up this uh, colorful episode of okay. uh, Come On Now. MJ and we're Luka. going to uh, listen. You, you know what the Dallas Mavericks are right now? They're 26 and 22 with the fifth best player in the fucking world, according to I'm sorry, the fifth best player, according to you, because you're like Jimmy at number five. Look at three. Look at three. I've kicked been out the whole year. He's like, you got three. I'm sorry, at three. Right, I'm, I'm number three. Really, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. He's supposed to be the win because you're the man. It don't matter who plays. You just said that. It ain't It ain't because of Luca. It ain't because he's scoring 15 points in fucking. All right, bro. All right, man. <laughs> uh, I know, and he's averaging 35, which leads the NBA. In game seven. He's and, like... he has, and he's 29 and 17 <laughs> right now. And he's Dallas. So suck a dick, Nick. Go ahead, Rudy. <laughs> Go ahead, Donald. <laughs> that wasn't even funny. That was stupid. It, 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 it was actually was more of a ploy to get you guys to go to your corners. That's that's really more, you know, some uh, audio visual trickery Luke. that Don has under his sleeve. Uh, with that being said, guys, we've had a very, very colorful episode. Um, you guys have gone to remarkable lengths to get your points across. I, I will give you that. Um, as we wrap up this show, we're going to end our, our, our show with runoffs. Runoffs is the part of the episode where we just talk, you know, spit fire topics. I'm going to throw a topic out there. You guys speak for, for a minute and we're gone. Um, the Clippers are sneakily good. Thoughts? Clippers, can they win it all? Fuck no. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. That's the same team that you that went in the bubble and said that they didn't want to play anymore. That's who you want me to believe in that added James Harden. Another guy who quits every way he go in the playoffs or on every team. That's you want me to believe in quitters who added another quitter to say that they're sneakily good. Fuck out of here, man! Get the fuck out of here. Who who's the leader on that team? Westbrook turning them around? No, I mean I do like that that Kawhi's played forty one out of fifty games this year. I I'm I'm okay with that. But heck no, I don't. Their mentality, their whole mental, I'm not believing in playoff P. <laughs> playoff P with, with Kawhi. I don't know. I, he, he's playing this year, but I don't know when his knee is going to go out. And then you want me to believe in Harden. I believe in Westbrook more than all those guys because I know every night he's going to come hard. But the rest of those guys, please, get the ball to Norman Powell rather than those guys <laughs> in, in game seven. I know Norman is a big-time player. The rest of them? Rudy. Rudy, give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts as we wrap up. Give me your thoughts. Clippers. Norman, Norman Powell's a big-time player. Oh my I know he'll step up in a big Oh, my God. God. <laughs> What's the next stupid thing out of your mouth? God, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Can the Clippers win the finals? Absolutely. But it comes down to one thing, health. That's it. Health. If they can stay healthy, they can win the finals. They can win it all. Since, since, since Russell Westbrook went to the bench and sacrificed for his team, they are 27-8. and eight. They are playing at an elite level. James Harden's only averaging 17 points a game, and they're winning games. He's managing the offense. Kawhi Leonard is playing. If Kawhi Leonard can play. When Kawhi Leonard plays, Kawhi Leonard's a top five player in the league, period. He has been. But he never plays. That's a problem. Paul George, I tell you, I, Paul George is, is, a, is a conundrum I can never figure out. Because he's talented. Because he's so goddamn good. But he's such a fucking pussy. Like, it, it, that playoff piece should I agree with Nick. It's the biggest joke on the planet because he typically folds in the playoffs. But talent-wise, he's, a, he's an unbelievable defender. He's 6'10". He's an unbelievable defender. You have two d- wing defenders like those two guys. If they are – we both – we all if, with them, if they are healthy, they are dangerous as hell. And I tell you what, Russell Westbrook will go a million miles a minute. He, is, he will bust his ass. He's playing really well off the bench. They have really changed their game. James Harden's actually been good for them. I, as, I can't stand James Harden. But he's been good. For, he's actually working there. He seems happy there. Unlike in Philly, he wasn't happy. The dude is playing well. They're, as a team, they're playing like a, like a team. If they stay healthy, they absolutely have a chance to win. I mean, they, they have the, I'd be surprised if they were not in the conference finals if they are healthy. 
Because last year, when Kawhi Leonard decided that his knee hurt too much to play and not take a Toradol shot for his knee to keep playing, because Nickel yell at me and say, oh, his knee was torn up. The, knee, the day his knee tore up, he had 39 points. The guy plays better on one leg than most of the guys in the NBA play. So if you can if you can stomach the pain, they would have won that series without a doubt in my mind. If he could play, that guy is. And in the playoffs, we've seen Kawhi Leonard elevate his game. Let's be real: the first championship that the Golden State Warriors won. Oh no, I must. Kawhi Leonard rolled his ankle. I was cheering for the Warriors, so stop it. But. You got to remember what was ha- what happened in that series. They might have won one game. That was a 67 win, 65 win Spurs team. Yeah. That wasn't some bad team. That was the worst matchup for the Warriors. That was the worst matchup the Warriors could have. And Kawhi Leonard gets hurt, and the series is over. And we also see Ka- Luka kill them in the playoffs. Kill who? Kawhi and Paul. Okay, yeah, great. I, what was that in the bubble? Whatever. I don't remember where it was. I don't remember where it was. I, I, remember, I remember. I remember Luca. I remember Luca went far one year, and, and and then the next year he didn't make the playoffs. It wasn't the bubble. Like, well, so, so then the next year he didn't make the playoffs, and his entire team, including no, him, next year, including the, the Clippers. Last year next was it? Year. Last year? Okay, so this year before, they went to the conference finals two years ago. Last year, the Mavericks quit. Luca quit. They did not go to the playoffs because Luca and Kyrie quit. Let's be honest with it. They both quit. And Luca was the captain of that team and he was the top quitter. So you use that quitter for one thing, use it for the other. The Clippers can go to the finals. They have a shot. Do I think they will? Probably not. In one minute. Because I think because, because I think Denver, no, you talk for four. Um, but I think Denver because you cut me off like five times, dude. I didn't say a word when you talked. A, I think Denver is going back to the finals, and I think Denver is probably going to win the championship. Again. With that being said, guys, that that was um, <laughs> that was an amazing runoff. I think I think that's that's it for the listeners and the viewers. What do you I'm think, going, Don? Uh, I personally believe. Thank you for including me, Rudy. Because Nick I, never wants to include you in this stuff. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if I. <laughs> I'm gonna I hold think capable. Nuts and put it to the stage. You better bring this nuts to the stage and talk for itself. <laughs> I I think I would love to see it because I love their owner Steve Ballmer. He invested love in the him. team. Yeah. They have a new new arena about to open up. I think it's really good for that fan base to see success. See some success. Shout out to Billy Crystal. Mm-hmm. He's been a diehard Clippers fan from day one, and they have a really interesting history. A lot of bad luck. So I would love to see them get over the hump and bring one to Inglewood. I believe that's where the arena is being built. Mm-hmm. And um, th- that fan base has seen some success. So I would love to see them do it. That's why I was such a big fan of seeing the Detroit Lions win it all this year. Certain fan bases just need something, and I think they would have been able to really benefit from that. So that being said, I really want to throw in one last runoff. Um, as we do here, we commentate, we moderate, we give our views. Uh, one of my favorite athletes of all time, Tom Brady, is stepping into the studio booth this season um, in the fall to start um, his 10-year broadcasting thing. Uh, some people get into the studio booth and they're horrible. Ray Lewis wasn't good. There were a couple other guys that just weren't good. Greg Olson has been remarkable. He's just really good in the studio. Um, do you think he will succeed and are you excited to hear him? I'll start by saying... I don't think there's anybody that has as much knowledge as him from a success point of view, from failing as well, from being an underdog, having that chip on his shoulder. I think he's going to be able to appeal to a lot of young athletes, um, a lot of listeners, a lot of viewers. But um, not to say that this come on now to show the podcast, we're shallow. I'm not saying that. We're not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that we're shallow, but we're shallow. I think it's good to have good looking people on television. Uh, Tom Brady's a good looking guy. So I think for, you know, different benefits and, and not to say that all the guys on, 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 on Fox and CBS are old farts. That's not what I'm saying, but I am saying they're, they're kind of old, they're kind of old. So to see some young blood uh, get into there, like Tom Brady, guy that looks like an underwear model, I think it'll be good uh, for the female viewers. And I think it'll be good for Fox. So that's, that's my thought. What do you, what, what do you guys think? I think that y'all are fucking nuts for saying that y'all will take a 40-year-old 
Michael Jordan over Luca right now. That's freaking crazy. But um, towards the- I said I said thirty nine. Oh my bad. 39. But that's what that's how old LeBron is. That's, that's why he's the exact. Y'all, y'all are crazy. I actually, I, I actually just data. You fandom. don't. Fandom. Okay. Fandom. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Tom Brady in the boot will be amazing, man. He he has a vast knowledge of, of the sport. Um, He's going to hit you with all the little technical things that everybody else wouldn't normally see, just like a Tony Romo. They both will be, like, he'll be great just like Tony Romo. He's going to give you in depth analysis that you would never usually get. He'll tell you what the quarterback is thinking, what they're seeing, or what they should be seeing. Um, it'll be a great insight. Um, like you said, he's he's Tom Brady. He's he's the goat. We want to hear from listening to, listening to Tom Brady talk is like what I dream about because he talks about what real football used to be. He says it like it is. I didn't throw the ball over the middle because I didn't want Ray Lewis to kill my receiver and knock him out of the game. In today's world, they throw the ball right over the middle because no one can get touched. He is a, he was a cerebral assassin as a quarterback. He thought the game because he was slow as hell. Tom Brady is a great, great football mind. He knows the game inside and out. I mean, it's probably why he's divorced <laughs> because he probably was never home, probably watching 12 hours of film a day. But the guy knew what people were doing before they did it. He could look at every, you know, formation on the defense and like, I know where he's going. I know where he's going. I know where he's going to be. He knew it all. That guy, I mean, <clears throat> I'm a Dolphins fan. Dan Marino will always be God. But Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. And he did it while not having those skills, uh, those blessings of having a rifle arm. Not fast, but he knew how to. He knows how to play football. And listening to him speak, there was an interview recently, a couple of days ago. I heard. I mean, he's going to be a have such command of that booth that I'm going to watch Fox games just to listen to Tom Brady talk about football, because he's going to make you feel like. I mean, he, he, he's going to bring something that Tony Romo's great, but Tony Romo never did it like Tom Brady. And like I said earlier, Peyton Manning's a dork. It's cute. Him and his dorky brother, they get on that thing on Monday night. They interview rappers and all, whatever the hell. And it's kind of comedic. But but that but that guy is going to bring something that you've never seen in the booth. Because as Nick says, Troy Aikman is the most overrated quarterback that I've ever seen. And I agree with him there. Tom Brady, <laughs> 81,000 passing yards or whatever it is. Every record, all the Super Bowls, all the wins, all the wins while not having the best talent around him besides his security blanket, Gronk, and two years at Randy Moss. He won with a bunch of white dudes playing wide receiver. <laughs> like, that's crazy. And Bill Belichick had good defenses. <laughs> but Tom Brady, I, I am excited to listen to that guy I'm in the booth. Yeah, I'm excited. <clears throat> Guys, uh, thank you for taking the time to bless the viewers and the listeners, because I think that's what we do this, at this point. At this point, we're just blessing you guys with our presence, with our knowledge, and sometimes uh, what the, the commenters on IG say are stupid comments. Uh, most of them are steered towards Rudy, not really us. But um, uh, I, I want to leave you guys with, uh, we're excited for next week. We're going to do a Super Bowl edition of come on now the podcast i think that one's going to get you guys excited for the big game uh, of course i'm going to come with a really great don's dimes rudy's going to come with a, another glorious rudy's rants and next week we're throwing in our new segment nick's picks nick's picks guys um i will say uh gambling are for people 21 and over uh do not use his information as uh the bible it is not meant for you to go gamble it's just Nick's picks. Uh, with that being said, I'm Don, your moderator. I'll leave it to the guys. Uh, final thoughts. And we're out of here. Like, like, subscribe, follow us. Instagram, come on now, podcast. Check out our, our clips there. We are on YouTube. Come on now, the podcast. Come check us out. Give us a shot. Like our stuff. Subscribe. Hit the bell. And share it. Please share it. We love this. We're doing this because we love this. And we love each other. I mean, 
we may hate each other for five seconds, but I, I mean, I love Nick like my brother. I've known I've known him since he was a child, literally. That sounded weird. Uh, he was 15. He played on my travel team. 16. <laughs> you know, he played on my travel team. So he was my. I've, I've known him since he was a, a him. You know, since he was 15, 16 years old. I'm telling you right. And I'm only. You know, I was only like 10 years old. So I wasn't that bad. I'm, listen, we we do this because we love it. We want to make it big. We want to do this more times a week. Like, subscribe, share it, and that's all. And we appreciate you because today I popped out. We popped out four shorts, lots of viewership. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think we said it all. <clears throat> if he said it all. Does. Uh, man, it was a great show, man. Great to talk to y'all guys, man. I enjoyed it. Um, all right, let's keep doing it, man. All right, see you guys next week. Follow, subscribe, logging off, like, hey, logging off, guys. Peace.